Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. We want to spend some time looking at common fractions in this lesson and a few more lessons to come. And we want to do so because we find that at the CSEC level, students continue to make mistakes, simple mistakes, and not getting full marks on questions that are presented in, in, in this form. And so for this lesson, we want to look at how to look at some basic stuff. We want to compare um, two common fractions. We want to look at what common fractions are, look at proper and improper fractions and equivalent fractions. And of course, we want to end the lesson by looking at how to add two common fractions together. So some interesting concepts here, but they're not difficult. So let's jump right into it. Here, we have two pizzas. Let's call this pizza A. And let's call this one pizza B. Both are cut into six. This pizza, pizza has six pieces. This one also has six pieces. Here, the pieces are not equal. Not equal to each other. While here, the slices are equal to each other. Um, let's just get that out of the way first. So here, these six pieces are not equal to each other, while here, these pieces are equal to each other. Now, we want to start by asking which of these is cut into fractions. The, we, can, we can debate it, we can argue it, that both are cut into fractions. Both are cut into fractions. Um, in terms of putting numbers on them, though, if we ask ourselves for the next question, from which can you take one sixth, then it becomes a little, a little bit more difficult. Because though this is cut into six and this is cut into six, we cannot justifiably say that this part of the pizza is one sixth of it because this piece is obviously bigger. And this piece is obviously bigger than down here, than this piece. So, when we ask which one can you take one sixth from, it has to be pizza B. And pizza B is the is is the one we can take one sixth from because in pizza B all the slices are the same size. Now this is very this is very, very important when we talk about fractions. A fraction we say is a part of a whole. It is a part of a whole, but when we say a part of a whole, we often do not add the fact that the slices, the parts of the whole, um, must be the same size. And so we're going to nail that down from now, that when we say a part of a whole, we mean that all the parts of the whole are the same size. Now, when we say one-sixth, because this piece would be one-sixth, when we say one-sixth, what we mean is this, this whole pizza is cut into six parts, and we are taking out one. And this number one is what we call our numerator. This number six is what we call our denominator. So our numerator, our denominator. The denominator tells us how many parts our whole is cut into. So we have one pizza, we cut it into six pieces, and then we take out one piece out of the six. And this is our one-sixth. All right? So the denominator tells us how many parts it's cut into. The numerator tells us how many parts we're taking out or how many parts are left, depending on the context of the conversation, of course. And this line in the middle is what we call a fraction bar. So importantly, when we talk about a fraction, we mean that all the pieces are equal to each other in terms of the, the fact that they're, they're, they're when we say one sixth, the six pieces are the same size. There are six pieces here in this pizza A, but those pieces are not the same size. In pizza B, these pieces are the same size. So we cannot say that this piece is one sixth. That would not be accurate. But we can say, because these pieces are equal, that each of these is one-sixth. So what then is a fraction? Apart from the fact that a fraction is a part of a whole, let's formalize it. A fraction is what we, is what we call a rational number. 
A rational number is a number that, that can be written in this form. We can write it in the form a over b, where a is the numerator and b is the denominator. Now, this denominator cannot be zero. Let me just make that clear from now. b cannot be zero. It can be any other number apart from zero. No. Um, if our numerator is larger or the same size as our denominator, for example, say we have 3 over 3 or 7 over 3, notice that the numerator is larger in these cases, then we call these type of fractions improper. If the numerator is smaller than the denominator, for example, 1 over 3, or 1 over 2, we call these proper. Now, importantly, when you're dealing with an improper fraction, for example, say we have 7 over 3, we can rewrite it. We can rewrite it as a mixed number. And we do that by doing a little bit of division. So, for example, we may say, how many threes can I get out of seven? Well, we can get two threes out of seven. And when you take out two threes, that would be six. It means that one is left. And so we can rewrite that as one out of three. And so seven over three can be rewritten as a mixed number as two and a third. Now, let's look at how we can deal with this thing called equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are important in our understanding of fractions because they are used in comparing two fractions and we use them in adding and subtracting fractions. So how do we make equivalent fractions? Let's say we have a fraction A over B as we have it here. We can create equivalent fractions simply by taking that fraction and multiplying it numerator and denominator by a constant. Let's do some examples. Let's say we have 1 over 3, and we want to make equivalent fractions for this. Then we can take any number apart from 0 and 1 and multiply the numerator and the denominator. So for example, let's take 2 and multiply the numerator and the denominator. Then if we multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2, we get 2 once 2 at the top, and 2, 3, 6. This would mean that one third and two sixths are equivalent. So one third and two sixths are equivalent. Let's take, try it again. Let's use five this time. So five times one and five times three. Then in this case, we get five ones five and five three is 15. And so one third is equivalent to two sixths is equivalent to 5 over 15. They have the same value, numerical value, and they are written with different numbers. And this little thing is very, very important when it comes to comparing fractions or adding and subtracting fractions, <clears throat> the idea of using equivalent fractions. Let's, let's try it again. Let's say we have a half. Let's make fractions that are equivalent to a half. To make fractions equivalent to a half, we pick a number apart from 0 and 1, and we multiply by, by, um, by the fraction. Now, if we use 0, then 0 times any number is 0, so that won't help. And if we use 1, then 1 times the fraction will leave us with the same fraction. It won't change it, so that's why we don't use 0 and 1. But let's use any other number. Let's use 2 first. So 2 times 1 over 2. So we multiply numerator and denominator, and that gives us 2 over 4. Let's take another number such as 3. And 3 times 1 over 2, we multiply the numerator and the denominator. 3, 1, 3, and 3, 2, 6. So notice again that a half and 2 over 4, or 2 fourths, and 3 sixths, they are all equivalent. They are equivalent to each other. So a third and 2 sixths and 5 fifteenths would be equivalent to each other. Likewise, a half. 2 fourths and 3 sixths would be equivalent to each other. And this is a very, very nice idea to learn how to create equivalent fractions because it's very, very useful.
Here's a case where we can use equivalent fractions to compare two fractions. Say, for example, Mark and Dave both got the same number of tickets to sell, and Mark sold three fifths of his tickets. And Dave sold two thirds. Now we want to know who sold more tickets. Now, um, if we had the number of tickets, we could multiply it out and find it, but we don't. And since we are told that they sold the same number of tickets, we could also give them a number of tickets, which is the same number, and multiply and find it. But in that case, um, we don't need to go through it because what we want to do is compare the two fractions themselves and see which one is bigger or which one is smaller. Now, let's write down their names. Let's say Mark and Dave. Now, Mark sells three-fifths of his tickets and Dave sells two-thirds of his tickets. Now, notice that these two fractions do not have the same denominator. In order to compare them, it would be nice if they had the same denominator. It would be easy, but we don't have it. So one thing that we can do is to make equivalent fractions so that we can compare them when they have the same denominator. The easiest way to do this is to take the denominator for Dave's fraction which is three, and use that to multiply the numerator and the denominator of Mark's fraction. And then we take the denominator of Mark's fraction and multiply the numerator and the denominator of Dave's fraction. What we do in that case is that we ensure that when we're done multiplying, both fractions will have the same denominator. Five three is 15, five three is 15. Now let's multiply. Three three is nine. And five three is fifteen. We could create. We could just write out all the um, equivalent fractions for Mark until we get to this point, but it's going to take a while. So just taking a shortcut here. And five two is ten. And five three is fifteen. Now they both have the same um, denominator, so we can compare them easily. Now Mark sold nine out of fifteen, nine fifteenth of his tickets, and Dave sold. 10 15th of his tickets. No, 10 is bigger than 9. And we can easily do that because they have the same denominator. So because 10 is bigger than 9, we know that Dave sold more. Now, as they are, in this case, 2 thirds and 3 fifths, it's not easy to tell which one is bigger. But by writing them with the same denominator, we can easily compare them and see which one is bigger. And this is done by using equivalent fractions. Sometimes we call it renaming, but we're just using the equivalent fractions to do it. Let's add two fractions with the same idea. Notice again here that these two denominators are the same size. Now this is a chocolate bar. It has 15 small bars, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Three have been eaten, and so... Um, what is left is 12 bars. In this one, same 15 bars, but in this case, eight have been eaten and seven are left. So we have 12 over 15, 12 out of 15, and seven out of 15. And what we want to do is to say how many pieces are left together. No, because they're both out of 15, we can simply go ahead and add the numerators. So let's write that down. Add the numerators. So 12 plus 7, that gives us 19. So we end up with 19 pieces out of 15. And this is an interesting number because 19 out 15 pieces make up the whole chocolate bar. So we can take 15 out of 19. And once we're finished, we have four pieces left. So we have one whole chocolate bar and four small pieces. Let's look at another question in which we have one-third plus three-eighths. Now, these two numbers are not the same. And because they're not the same, it's not as easy to compare as in this case where both these numbers are the same. So what are we going to do? We are going to add the one-third to the three-eighths. But before we do that, we're going to rename them or use equivalent fractions to write them. And the fast way to do it is to take this denominator and multiply numerator and denominator here and take this denominator now and multiply 
numer numerator and the denominator. Once we do that, we ensure that when we are finished with them, they have the same numerator and denominator. So, eight ones are eight, and three eights are 24, and three threes are nine, and three eights are 24. Now, one third is equivalent to eight over 24, and three eights is equivalent to nine over 24. And so, because they have the same denominator, we can go ahead and add them, and nine plus eight here gives us 17, and so our answer would be 17 over 24. Notice that we cannot take 17, 24 out of 17 because this is a proper fraction. The numerator is smaller, so we just leave it as is. So we can rename our fractions. We can create this idea of an equivalent fraction to one third, an equivalent fractions, fraction to 3, 8, where they both have the same denominator. And once they do that, we can simply go ahead and add the numerators. Now let's look at another one where we have some whole numbers in there. So if we're adding a whole number to a fraction, to a proper fraction, then all that we do is that we simply remove the plus sign and write it beside each other, 2 and 3 fifths, and we would be finished. That's it. No challenge there. But if we have mixed numbers and fractions together, then we have a little bit more work to do. So let's add this one, 1 and 2 third plus 3 and 5 over 7. Let's say, for example, you went to the market and you bought some um, 1 and 2 third pounds of beef and 3 and 5 seven pounds of fish, and you want to find out how much pounds you're taking home um, in total. Then we look at the whole numbers first. So we're going to add the 1 and the 3. And 1 plus 3, you know, gives you 4. So that's 4 pounds already. And then we need to add the fraction parts. So let's look at the fraction parts. 2 over 3 plus 5 over 7. Notice they are not the same denominator. So before we go ahead and add these, we need to make equivalent fractions or, or rename them so that they have the same denominator. And that we can do by taking this denominator here and multiply that numerator, that denominator, take this denom denominator here and multiply this one. When we do that, we make sure that when we're finished, both will have the same denominator of 7 times 3, which is 21. So 7 twos here, that gives us 14 over 21. And 5 threes here gives us 15 over 21. So now, we can add these because our denominators are the same now. We can say 14 plus 15, that gives us 29 over 21. And so 29 over 21 can be rewritten because it's an it's a, um, improper fraction. We can rewrite it as a mixed number by saying how many 21s can we take out of 29? Well, we can take out 1, 21, and that would leave us with 8. And so now to finish our question, we need to add this 4 and this 1 and 8 over 21. So 4 plus 1 and 8 over 21 gives us, just put the whole numbers together, 4 plus 1, 5 and 8 over 21. And that would be our total. So importantly, remember, if you're adding two fractions, and your denominators are not the same, then first you need to rename those fractions, get a fraction equivalent to it, and then once they are the same, you go ahead and add the numerators. If the, new, if the denominators are the same, then you can just go ahead and add. All right. Remember, you can find more past and practice papers at our website at csecmathtutor.com. And remember to subscribe and share as you continue to learn and grow in your studies. Thank you for watching.